Okay, is the bonding in PF3 ionic or covalent? So remember, to answer this question, we have to answer, are the elements metals or non-metals? So to find out the answer to that question, we have to locate them in the periodic table. Here's phosphorus, P. Here's P. So how, where are the metals and where are the non-metals? So generally, this information, is, it's already drawn on the periodic table, but sometimes it's not. So there's a line that kind of goes like this, zigzags its way down the table. And things that are on the right are metal, are non-metals. And things that are on the left of that line are metals. So here's phosphorus. Phosphorus is on the right. Phosphorus is a non-metal. Non-metal. F, fluorine. Here's fluorine. It's kind of next to phosphorus. It's also a non-metal. Non-metal. So non-metal plus non-metal equals covalent. Draw a Lewis structure for the compound, PF3. Okay, so to draw a Lewis structure, the first thing we need to do is draw a Lewis structure of each atom that's in the compound. So let's find P. Here's P. How I first draw, draw the symbol, P, and I have to figure out how many electrons it has. So to find out how many electrons P has, I go back to the beginning of the row that it starts in, back to the beginning of the period. So this is in the third row, P is, so I go right back here to the beginning of the third period and I count over to P. One, two, three, four, five. So that means P has five valence electrons. One, come on. One, two, three, four, five. So this kind of looks like the Lewis structure for N, doesn't it? Well, look at where P is on the periodic table. P, N. So these two have the same Lewis structure because look, if I do this to N, one, two, three, four, five. N has 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. P has 5. So they have the same structure. In fact, arsenic also has that same structure. And antimony. Oxygen and sulfur and selenium and tellurium all have the same structure. F and Cl and Br and I, they all have the same structure. So all of the elements that are in the same column all have the same Lewis structure. So let's draw F. F is here. So first we draw the symbol F, and then the number of electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven for F. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, and now there are three Fs. So we have three of these. I'm going to draw one up here. F, two, and three, four, five, six, seven. And one over here. didn't really leave myself enough room to draw this. Here, I'll tell you what. I'm going to draw it. Okay, we're going to draw it in this program instead, so I've got a little more room. P. One, two, three, four, five. This is for P, F, 
3. So then I have F, F, F. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Remember you draw them around 1, 2, 3, 4 first as singles, and then you pair them up. 5, 6, 7. I have one left over. Okay, so uh, now that we get to this point, I see that P has one, two, three single electrons. It, it needs three more electrons to get to eight. And F has seven electrons. It only needs one more to get to eight. So when I have single electrons, the next step is to pair them up. You see how I've kind of already drawn these close to each other. That one pairs up with that. This one pairs up with that one. And this one pairs up with this one. It's like a puzzle. You look for the unpaired electrons and you try to match them up. So um, when I've finished pairing up my electrons, I know that I'm done when every atom has either eight electrons, if it's in the second row or below, or if it has two electrons if it's hydrogen. Remember, hydrogen can only hold two. So I'm pretty much counting for eight electrons for everything except hydrogen where I count only count two. So let's count them. I have two, four, six, eight. So that fluorine is good. It has eight. And I count this one. Two, four, six, and then these two, eight. That fluorine is good. Two, four, six, and these two, eight. That fluorine is good. And now phosphorus. Two, four, six, eight. So phosphorus is good. They all have eight. They all meet the octet rule. So this is the way that we draw Lewis structures for covalent compounds. I first, just like I did with the ionic compound, we draw each atom with its covalent with the number of uh, valence electrons, and then we match up the single electrons. So let's write down the rules. One, drawing Lewis structures. Draw Lewis structures of all atoms. So draw Lewis structures for each atom with valence electrons. Two, we have to choose an atom that goes in the middle. So how did I know that the P went in the middle there? So the next step is choose a central atom. So the way that we choose a central atom is by um, looking to see uh, which element is the closest to the middle of the periodic table. So which atom goes in the middle? Well, the one that's the closest to the middle of the periodic table. So good trick. So here's P. Let's call the middle. We'll say its dead center is right about here. Right? That's about the middle of the periodic table. So here's P. It's about that far away from the middle. And here's F. F is further away from the middle because F is out here on the edge. So which one's closest to the center of the table? P. So P goes in the center. So closest to center of periodic table.
Okay, next step, three, join unpaired electrons. to make single bonds. Four, so you should always make single bonds first. After you make single bonds, if you still have unpaired electrons, then make double and triple. If unpaired remain, then make double and triple bonds. Depending on what the case calls for, you probably can't make both. Double and or triple. All right, and finally, after you've drawn the atoms and they all have the right number of valence electrons, and you put the right one in the middle, and you've paired up all of the electrons and there are no remaining paired electrons, then unpaired electrons, I mean, then you should be done. There's really only one way to draw it the right way, and that's after you pair them all up. So to make sure that you did it correct, a good way to check yourself is check the octet rule. So if you follow these five steps every time when you're drawing Lewis structures, you should be able to always draw the right structure. And just make sure that at the end, everything has eight electrons. Follow the octet rule.